Hey, Jim. It's the guy from Rochester, New York. Hey, I wanted to say uh, sorry for disrupting your whole show, bro. That just kind of touched a, you know, a little bit, of, a little bit of a nerve in me there. So, yeah, again, sorry, dude. I think you're a good, good comedian. You're funny as fuck. And sorry, I blew up there. I guess that's all. Okay, so this is the. I think it was the Rochester show, Rochester, yeah. New York. Yeah. So th this gentleman who just he left a message to apologize, and I have to say to him, "You're, you're. If it's really you, uh, that was very. I, I'm sure that took a lot. I'm sure that took a lot." to do and um bro let, let so let, let me don't worry about it don't worry about it i think it was settled that evening so long story short and of course it's one of the only shows i didn't film you weren't there mike so me and sib we're doing a shows it's rochester new york really hot crowd very electric crowd and um i started going into some of the things that i'm you know, talking about currently and a lot of it, there's a big section in there where I talk about my wife and how my wife feels about certain things and, and my daughter and where she's at life and whatever. I don't want to go too much into the routine because I want you to see it live. Um, and the subject matter in my opinion, triggered this guy. All I remember is I'm in the middle of it and I heard some yelling. And then I saw this gentleman walk towards the stage and, you know, security jumped on him and they were, they were getting him out. And, but I can hear, I, I got enough of him to know that, he was clearly upset about something that had nothing to do with me. And he was triggered by the subject matter. And I stopped the, I stopped the, the people from taking him. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let him, let him speak. Let him speak. And it was one of those moments where I usually go with my intuition. And in my opinion, I thought this guy was extremely... Something horrible and painful happened to him, and he's not completely healed yet. It's, it's, in my opinion, it's like an alcoholic who says they're never going to drink again, and this is their first time in a drinking environment, and they got mad at the drinkers, and they got mad at, and they couldn't handle it yet because they're not ready to face that environment. And I felt like he, he, the horrible thing that must have happened, I can only make a guess, but I, I, he, he related a word or the subject to his particular situation without waiting to hear the whole entire routine. And, and we, you know, he was yelling and I said, Hey, 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 listen to me. And we were talking from the stage, which I do not encourage. No one's paying 30, 40, 50, 80 dollars to listen to a customer or a patron get up and stop a show. No one's listening to you. You're not it's not cool. It's uh it's it's I don't know why it's it's always a disaster and it's never good for anyone. So I took it upon myself to at least listen to him because I felt like I knew where his pain was coming from. And I try to reach him that way. And I said, I understand that, but I, what I'm saying has nothing to do with your situation. And I'm sorry for whatever pain you're going through. Clearly, you lost someone in your life because of a certain thing, and you're lumping it into... and. And I felt bad for him. Even as he left, I didn't make fun of him. I didn't, I, I truly felt terrible for him. Not because of, and I wasn't mad. It wasn't like stopping the show and, and 
it wasn't that it was more there's a lot of people like him and a lot of people involved with uh politics or they think they're in politics or or whatever subject matter you, it, it, this is the state of our minds I, i've never seen this in my existence never have i seen such control over people's existence i mean th think about the power of just saying a word you're in an audience or you're sitting at home and i had i had another woman where is she um she reached out it was arizona show which was a great show it was a electric show you know they all stood up in the end it was it was powerful packed place Carrie, Carrie Lake showed up and my sister was like, I really like that woman because I only know her as the mom with children. She used to come to the school that I'm at and pick up her children. She was very, she's very involved with her children. And I went, really? Carrie Lake? She said, yeah, I didn't really know anything about her running for governor. So, so long story short, Carrie Lake comes to the show in Arizona. And she came just to hang out and backstage, you know, she was talking about punk rock. She's talking about punk rock. And I said, uh, Joe, do you know this? Because Joe Sib is really into punk rock. He tours with me. Um, I, I said, Joe, do you know this punk rock that, that Carrie's talking about? And he went, oh, my God, I love them. And they, they were off. And you got to see the real human being. And we were talking about kids and stuff like that. So I guess when she walked into the theater, some people were chanting, hey, USA, whatever they were chanting. They were, they, they, she clearly had fans there. And this one particular couple, because she told me about them, was sitting next to her, and they were pissed that she was there. They were already agitated that she was there. And clearly that's from either your, she's not on your team. And I cannot express enough how dangerous a society you are creating if you are 100% are cemented into a team. It blinds you. It blinds your morals. It blinds your faith. It blinds your thinking process. It blinds your emotions. It blinds your spirit. It blinds your morality. It blinds your entire existence of knowing your own thought process and what is right is wrong. And I don't think I can find this woman, but this woman, she, she reaches out, she DMs me on Instagram she didn't go public. She DM me, so I won't make her go public, right? It's a beautiful woman. Just walked out of your hate-filled bullshit set at Mesa Arts. You are not funny. Just pushing the hate-filled rhetoric. What happened to you, goat boy? So I said, can you please be specific? I have no clue what you're talking about. There was nothing in that show that was hateful. And there wasn't. And matter of fact, at one point I said, there's nothing political here. I'm just going to tell you what I see from a distance. And I'm not attached to any party. And I'm not. I don't know if anyone's figured it out yet. I'm not. Even if you see me at an event or hear I'm an event, doesn't mean I'm a thousand percent all in. It just means I'm simply there and absorbing. Just walked out of your head. So I, I asked her, what exactly? And she mentions... So she got triggered because I mentioned Take a look around and what do you see? Lock the day down tonight, we'll make it history. Hey, this is Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week. And have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you, I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there.